Thanks for that, Danica. Um, we have... Uh, this meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. Right now. And um, we have... Uh, uh, I'll take a little roll here. Uh, we have Julie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Bryn. Uh, Nellie. Uh, it's Nellie, okay. Yep. Um, and uh, among the uh, advisory committee members, uh, Tim Wessel. Yep. Uh, Ingrid Jonas. Yep. Dr. Levine is expected, right? As far as I know, and, yes. Uh, okay. And so, uh, in, and for uh, the NACB, it's uh, uh, Danica and uh, Gina, myself. Yep. Do we have any, uh, are there any public uh, members who may want to comment later on? We have two members of the public. <laughs> they, they will decide later if they want to, if they want to comment. <laughs> okay. Depends on how happy they are with this, this meeting. Most right? likely. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and uh, I don't think we have any public comments to uh, deal with. We do not. Time to us, do we? Not yet, but you know what? Let's do this if you don't mind, let's go here. Um, we do have two sets of minutes that have been sent out. Um, Mark, if you'd like to see if we can get those approved. Sure, we've, we've been trying to catch up on these um, the minutes of uh, September 20. Uh, if everyone's had a chance to take a look, um, could we get a, a motion to approve? I can make that motion. Excellent. All right, Tim Wessel moves. Uh, and uh, Ingrid, are you uh, able to second? Yeah, second. Second. Okay. second. All in favor? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, uh, and uh, the minutes for uh, the uh, 23rd, uh, one of our last week meetings. Um, do we have a, a motion to? Uh, to approve the minutes. I can make that motion. Thanks, Ingrid. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Ingrid. Um, all in favor? Motion is approved. So, um, Mark, if you don't mind, may I just hop in on the public um, comments? from last time, um, they are noted in here. Tim, thank you for providing those. Uh, we did go over them with the subcommittee group and they were discussed. So as an FYI, um, and they have been loaded uh, by Nelly into the system so that they are on record, um, just to let you know. Uh, so what I would like to do is, as we do each week, remind members of the public um, that we don't have any written public comments for today. If you'd like to make public comments, you may do so at ccb.vermont.gov um, via their public input form, which is very easy to find. Mark, anything you want to add? Um, no, I don't. Um, why don't you pick up the, uh, the uh, conversation where we left off uh, last um, I am going to move over. So Tim, I know you weren't with us on Monday, but um, I, I would like to, to open the floor to ask um, if the package example reviews, um, if you have any questions about those or if you found them helpful as we work on the anatomy of a package for Vermont. Yeah, I looked them over and uh, they were very helpful. Thank you. Uh, don't have any specific comments right now. But. Okay, no problem at all. So I'm gonna just keep moving over we're going to go to warning symbols. Okay. And this is uh, this is Mark Levine. I'm I'm on only by phone for a bit, but um, I'll uh, keep myself on mute because I'll be driving part of it too. All right, excellent. Welcome. And so that everyone on here is aware, in case you didn't note this. Um, the discussions that we have today will be incorporated into um, a deck for the Department of Health. So today's discussions will go into basically a compilation of everything that we've done here and we'll be putting forth um, what the committee would like the Department of Health to see and review 
Um, and so we can talk about that, uh, what that might look like if you'd like in the end. But for the for the members of the, the subcommittee, um, there are the, there will be no surprises. It will be nothing that you have not seen, but it will be condensed into really where we are now, if that makes sense for everybody. So let's move on to warning symbols. So um, what we did was place these two warning symbols, the, the Maine and Massachusetts warning symbol with um, the subcommittee requested more realistic lease. And so you're gonna see this two ways. Um, this first is what we call a white knockout. So this is the contained THC and not safe for kids. Um, what I will add in here is you'll see some new package samples in two slides. Um, and what I would like to share with everyone is a reminder that uh, when you when we have packages that have color on them, that sometimes colors may get lost. So there's a couple of considerations and that is if there's just one symbol or if there may be two symbols that are the same symbol but used based on the color of the package. So I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, the branding guidelines for Maine only use one color, which is the white knockout. Um, and we will be sharing those uh, and the files with the Department of Health today as well. So this is as requested with the more realistic lease. You can see over here, and, and please note, there is not parity between the logo symbols at this time on these because they were already locked. Um, but this is an example and also by height of um, three different packages uh, from both Michigan and Illinois that display the, um, the warning symbol. Um, and then what I'd like to do before I go to comments is based on colors and um, what packages may look like. We created uh, a couple of fake packages and we also changed the color of um, one of the packages to yellow so that you could see what bright colors may look like with warning symbols. And this is truly for effect. And um, I'm gonna open the floor up. I know Dr. Levine, you're on the phone, but, um, but Tim and Ingrid, um, if you can see these or if you had the opportunity, um, would welcome your feedback. Thank you, Ingrid. Tim, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I think these look fine to me. I okay. don't really have huge thoughts. It's um, if when you get to the yellow, maybe I'll have a thought for you there. Absolutely. No problem at all. So that takes us to the yellow, <laughs> and that is next. So um, there are the yellow and red symbols um, as well, and not to throw like i mentioned another choice in there because we do need to to get to a comfort level with warning symbols um other states often have one that is either black and white or black and white and red and then one that might be in green or another color and that and then they give guidance on that that may be more than the control board or everyone wants to consider at this point but um, we can put these options forth um, with the with the Department of Health as well and get their input. And Julie, you mentioned that you had some packages from Maine and Massachusetts. I do. Is there can showcase those? Um, yeah, actually. Um, and maybe useful is on something with lots of color and then something that's white. So that's um, this. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, you can see down in the corner. There we yeah. go. <clears throat> so that is a blue package with the main and, and uh, mass symbol on it. Um, and you can, you know, that, that white knockout stands out. It's a kind of a light colored package. This is sort of a multicolored package that has that on it. And then actually here's a white package. It's not on the front, this is a water not on the front of this package it's on the back with the warning symbol and it's red and white 
Julie, would you show the multicolor package again, the, the middle one that you did? Does that have a red outline on it? I can't really tell. It does, yep, it has a red okay. outline. Okay, okay, yep. thank you. And thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, your item, Julie uh, will take some photos of those and I'll incorporate in um, they are neighboring states uh, um, packages. Uh, any Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way they get displayed. I, it makes me feel like the red is is a must, you know. Um, I'm I'm less um, concerned with the the yellow idea now that I've seen all of these, but I guess I don't care either way. If if the consensus is it should also be yellow center, but I think the white. As long as it's assured that uh, the white won't be replaced by the package cover itself, it's right? A knockout, I guess, is the term, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the the nice thing about this, um, and the way that that Maine put their guidelines together, they have one document. It has both of these symbols, and then tells you exactly the dimensions that they should be, in addition to providing all the files for immediate download. So that does you know, help uh, in that capacity as well. Let me show you the yellow anyway, Tim, on some packages. Um, so that is, again, not parity because they were already locked, but those are the yellow and the red. And then where it becomes, you know, the important consideration as well is when colors do come into play. Again, these are fake packages except for the one in the middle, but that's, um, you know, what, what the red and, um, and yellow would look like. So I'm going to flip here. There it is in white with parity. And there it is with red and yellow with parity in size. And you said that uh, the Department of Health or Dr. Levine will be taking a look at this yes. and asking their input. Yeah. I, definitely interested in their expertise. Okay. I feel like I, I like both. I feel, feel like the yellow pops out a little bit more. It certainly makes the point, um, but I don't feel super strongly about yellow versus just the white knockout. They both seem effective. Okay, very good. Tim, anything? Uh, yeah, just again, that I think the, the red border is a must. And um, the, okay. the yellow is a nice to have, but I don't know if there's other considerations that would make it tough on uh, people to reproduce it. So one additional item that I think is important to note um, is in some of the other states, it is not unusual for the product fact label that is printed and stuck onto the package to have that on there, specifically black and white, but that would be an in addition to versus um, and in place of. So um, there may be some considerations, Julie and the board for us as it relates to, um, as it does relate to anything that might be printed on the product fact that there may be an instance where it's just an additional warning but may need to be in black and white because of the way those are printed. Um, so we will definitely note that as well. So thank you everyone for your feedback. We'll put both of these forth to uh, the Department of Health for their review, and we'll also be supplying them with photos of Maine and um, Maine's guidelines for um, licensees to use when it comes to their packages. So everyone's feeling good about this one, correct? I just want to be sure. I feel like we have a win. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Excellent. Julie, were you going to say something? No, I was just nodding my head. My head. Okay, fantastic. So, um, you know, I think this is just really a synopsis to put together um, for everyone as, as for where we've been and what we may want to consider moving forward. You know, the warning language for packages really has got to be concise and the purchaser has got to be able to read it. Um, and we've seen time and time again where sometimes those are not 
able to be read. Julie, do you feel like you could read the warning labels on the ones from um, Maine and Massachusetts, their uh, written warning? I will give it a try. I did not bring my reading glasses with me, so okay. and these are quite small. Um, okay. <laughs> so this one that I showed before, the blue package, um, uh -huh. on the back says, well, on the front it says pass mandatory testing. Um, and then the warning on the back says, um, there may be health risks associated with the use of this product. There may be additional health risks associated with the use of this product for women who are pregnant and breastfeeding or planning on becoming pregnant. Do not drive a motor vehicle or operate heavy machinery while using this product. So that, um, that is this, this blue box. And Great. then, um, different with the with the water um, I thought was interesting is that it says all of the same things but it also says um, it's against the law to drive or operate machinery when under the uh, influence of this product so it's a it's slightly it's slightly different okay but the good thing is you can read it without your reading glasses That's on right, which and, is great. <laughs> and I, I that was something I was not able to do these are reading glasses with packages from the other state it was it was very difficult yeah. to do so the so so thank you for that um one additional item that i do want to put out there for the board is as much a, a committee is as much as everyone likes bullet points that may be an unrealistic um way to put a warning symbol on a package just due to the size of it um which is why we're seeing so many of them in paragraph form uh, but again, just want to put that out there. Um, one of the other considerations is to break apart the warning language. We've seen two warnings so that there's a special call out. I'll show that in just a moment um, where it gives special attention to children and also to pregnant or breastfeeding women. Um, this is one that would more than likely um, cause some angst in the retail environment, but any package that is smaller than five inches in length, no matter what you do, is going to have crushed and condensed font sizes. So for scale, um, I'll flip back here. These packages and, and the back of them are, are forward. Um, you can see like this one is seven, this one was close to seven, and this one was six. So I do want to put that forth that that is something of importance um, is, is size when it does come to readability. Um, I'll go back. Then um, the next thing is having a QR code on each package that would take um, someone to additional health and safety information. I did see um, today I was reading New York's. They already have their safety flyer, which is three pages long. Together, I will circulate that out to the group, but there would be opportunity to take someone to a place where they can get additional information. And then we'll put any additional recommendations or considerations based on any feedback we received today. But does anyone have any thoughts on any of these, especially um, as it relates to warnings? And it's okay if you don't, not yet, you know. Okay, fantastic. I just appreciate all the input today. So there is um, a draft uh, recommendation that could be edited by any of you, but also the Department of Health. And that is, this is two ways to look at it based on the package um, evaluation that we've done. One would be where all language is together. This is a cannabis product, this, this is a cannabis Sorry, I'm missing a word, I'll fix that. This is a cannabis product that has not been analyzed or approved by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, for use by individuals 21 of age and older or registered qualifying patient only. Keep this product away from children. Do not use a pregnant or breastfeeding. The effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more. Cannabis can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. It is against the law to drive or operate machinery when under the influence of this product and then the phone number for the National Poison Control Center. A second way to look at it is to take out the children and breastfeeding from the paragraph and give it its own call out box. Now, whether this is the actual warning statement or not, it definitely um, does get us started and follows 
what is needed um, with the statutes. So even if you may not agree with the language, do you have some thoughts or considerations on how you're seeing this here? Yeah, I think, you know, they're, they're both reasonable ways to, um, to approach it. Um, I personally, for some reason, I always like the, uh, I like the bolded in the middle okay method and i'm i'm not sure why but i just feel like uh, I don't know, you get to it sooner and you're less likely to um, avoid it somehow okay but that's just my own personal opinion you know, I, you know what everything is subjective so i think it's very important that that you share your your opinion because um there is an element where your eye goes right here to keep this product away from children in the middle. There, I mean, so there's really two schools of thought, but but that is a very um, valid point, and and thank you for your feedback. Ingrid, thoughts? Yeah, I agree that there's something about the bold in the center that gives you a place to start, and then it's it's serious, and so it you know I don't know. There's something about the way the eye moves over the information more so than view number two okay um, again I'm, i agree i'm not really sure why but that one seems to i i get that one more okay that's great and um wonderful i appreciate that so we'll um is there anything in the language that gives you pause I think it's, it seems like it's pretty standard language, uh, warning language, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, not only for cannabis. <clears throat> is a is my eye playing tricks, or I mean, it's the same amount of uh, text, but the one on the right looks uh, less jammed up to me. It, yeah, and and it's because we did remove, you know, a piece of it, so it. It takes the size down a little bit as well. Um, but we can certainly put both forward and see what the Department of Health thinks. Um, and they may edit and rewrite the whole thing, and that is perfectly, um, you know, acceptable and would be fantastic because then we would know it follows. But um, is anybody opposed to giving them both options? Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Julie, any consideration here? Um, no, although um, someone just handed me a uh, California product that had a little bit different of a warning um, that I thought was interesting because we'd talked about this before, about it um, being a schedule. So the first line of the California warning is that it's a Schedule One controlled substance. Um, and I just, you know, we yeah. can let the Department of Health weigh in on that, but I know that there was some discussion on that. Including that yeah, and that absolutely. And thank you for providing that information. Um, that is a California uh, package right there. So absolutely, um, it, it is noted for them. Thank you very much. And for anyone who would like to review additional packages, especially if you're a member of the public, this will be available online. Okay, so um, we, we started out with um, some tasks from Monday, but honestly, I think what this is gonna come down to is, um, you know, what, we don't have to go through unless you have your top two packages or things that you thought were best represented the um, warning situation and, and the warning uh, symbols but it sounds like and please correct me if i'm wrong that the biggest thing is readability and parity in the symbols is there anything for the subcommittee members that i may be missing from that or mark that i may be missing that readability and parity whatever it is okay 
would anybody like to comment anything further on this um, before we move on? We're actually moving at a, at a good pace, so I want to make sure everybody is, is getting their say or their contributions in. I think I just wanted to, um, because I'm not sure, we, somewhere along the way it was dropped that we were putting, not putting VT in the uh, in the warning symbol, um, which I'm fine with. But was that ever talked about? That, uh, or was it just sort of a consensus vibe? That <laughs> you know what I what I had in my notes was that we could remove VT, and it's from a few times back. It could certainly be added. Um, the thing that I would say is if we were to put the VT in there then we may want to drop the word contains THC, which is implied because at that point you will, we will shrink the font even more to add a VT and it could lessen the size of the symbol. Yeah. Uh, but it is certainly something that, that could be done. Yeah, I just, I guess I was just, I thought it was unnecessary. I've seen that California does it, right? Maybe, uh, I don't know if other states do, but I just was kind of curious what the, what the purpose of doing that is to to brand it to the state We're using a warning symbol like i just don't quite it Why? doesn't drive with me and i'm not recommending that we go back to that idea but i was just kind of curious why they would do that in the first place yeah i i tend to agree i feel like and i could be wrong but they, I feel like it's a way of almost advertising. It's like free advertising on some level where I feel like we're focused on getting the information out there about the facts about this product and what it contains. And to put Vermont on there seems irrelevant to this mission of a warning. Well, and additionally, Vermont is going to be on the package somewhere anyway, because it will have to be more than likely based on all the fact labels and everything else. So, um, so absolutely. Um, what we're trying to I, do is... I, 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 I concur. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Levine. So, um, great. So, what we are going to um, do for our next step is um, we've already talked about this, we've gotten feedback, um, we've gotten some considerations, we're going to uh, lock some of this stuff up, or, or I should say put it all together and hand it over to the Department of Health for their consideration. And so um, I'll be sharing with, with you and them some of the safety flyers from other states as well and um, their language because that is part of VSA 907. Um, the safety information flyer. So we'll be providing some examples of those um, for everyone to see. And I do believe that the, the Department of Health input is going to be incredibly um, helpful um, to us. So there are still some charges that we have as far as our October 20th deadline. Um, and we can do these on Monday. We have some of this already, but that is what those guidelines may look like overall, which we really would need to wait for the Department of Health's language back. But there is the opportunity to come to consensus and agreement on ways to um, mitigate and reduce youth exposure, which is one of the challenges because there are some items that can be considered that may not be part of the statute, like has done, which includes, you know, no dispensaries within 1,000 feet of a school youth center or daycare center. Um, it's not saying that that's what's going to happen, but there is opportunity for the subcommittee to put those types of recommendations forward, age gating, um, which has to happen anyways with the with a cannabis style website, but also with, with any other types of things. But then that's those ways that we can limit youth exposure. Um, and then I believe, let me go back to the beginning um, slide for our so regulations regarding advertising and marketing that limit youth exposure. That's a key uh, piece, packaging and labeling. 
um, that and the warning language is what's going to the Department of Health. And then the consideration of the dispensary as a food manufacturing establishment, which would key in on oversight. And one of the things I think with that being one of the points that I would like to raise um, with the committee is if we go to Illinois, this particular one, this is where it had a label on it that basically says this is an edible, but it was made in a cannabis um, environment. So, and not is not considered a food, even though I, it probably has 50 to 100 calories in it. It, it. So that is something I would like everyone to give some, some consideration to as well for us to talk about next week is ways to limit youth exposure. We'll recirculate some of that. And then also um, whether or not edibles are part of, um, are considered food or dispensary. And that means that Mark and I more than likely will go beyond just what we have here to find out what it looks like in other states um, as well. But these are what will go into our recommendations um, for the 20th. Mark, you want to add anything? You're on mute, at least to the youth side, because you definitely have so much experience in that as well. well I think uh, all you know the, the real key thing for youth. Uh, Limiting youth exposure is uh, is in your is in your advertising uh, standards, which we've covered, and uh, also in uh, compliance mechanisms at the at the retail level, which you know we can talk about, but it's also being covered by the uh, compliance committee, compliance and enforcement. Um, so I think we just need to make sure that what we're recommending is part of that uh, a broader package, which is you know could. Could include those three parts. That's a really good point on the compliance and enforcement, Mark. I know you're on that um, that subcommittee as well as an advisor to that. Um, does that sound right to everyone that we go back to those things next week? Um, I will say the advertising guidelines. We can have some of that, but I still think that the Department of Health's weigh-in is going to be paramount to how some of this stuff final ends in final shaping. Um, and their thoughts and considerations. Sound right for everyone? Sure does. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. And thank you all for, um, you know, this process. It's, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of information and a lot of things to go over. Um, unless there are any additional items um, from the subcommittee that you'd like to bring up or, or raise a point on, Julie, we can actually move to public comments. So before we do that, um, anything else, Dr. Levine, Tim, or Ingrid that you'd like to to note? And Done at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much for your input and your guidance. Um, yes, sir, Dr. Levine. I was just going to say, I'm okay. Um, is there a, um, I know we want the stuff to come back from my department in as timely way as possible, but is there a, a definite uh, timeline you'd want to give ahead of time so I can try to have that happen? Absolutely. We, um, we owe our written report on October 20th. However, um, you'll have the big bulk of it today, Dr. Levine, for the team. And then um, Monday, if we tackle advertising and limiting youth exposure, some of the language may end up in that as well, but we could pass that on to you. So I would say looking at a calendar, um, let me get into one or, I would like for, um, if there is any way that could be back in our hands um, by the 8th so that we could circulate it to the subcommittee, um, anything that they have, and then we could wrap up the week of the 11th, that would give us, that's a, just over a week. Is that um, too aggressive, Dr. Levine, or do you feel like that's something we could do at least on this first set? 
I'll, uh, I'll try to get that happening. Okay, fantastic. I'll get that other over to you today, like I mentioned, um, now that we know these pieces. And um, we can also take it piecemeal so that we can put the reports together. The substance is there, um, so it definitely will give us some opportunity. Do we have, and, and thank you so much, Dr. Levine. Um, do we have any public comments, Julie? Anybody like to add anything? Yeah, my name is uh, actually. If you could I come sit right sit here, sit right here. They, well, yeah, because they can't see you. Sorry about that. Right. And if you could just say your name. Yep, absolutely. My name is uh, Taylor Carpenter. Thank you guys for today. I just wanted to have one comment about um, just the packaging and just the five inches, um, the five inches minimum regulation. I just want to just maybe challenge you to maybe look deeper into like, you know, some of the really high volume products we're gonna see in some of the stores here are gonna be, you know, concentrates, vapes, and pre-rolls, which are all under five inches. I mean, when you just look at a tiny bit. So I just wanna challenge and, and maybe think more about that because we're gonna be adding a lot of waste. I mean, if we're putting these, these products that are just, you know, really small into a lot of cardboard and a lot of packaging, it's going to create a lot of waste and, and it's just kind of unnecessary. So I just maybe challenge you to think about some of that smaller stuff because I think 50% of the, the products coming out of the store are going to be in, in things that are smaller than five inches. So just wanted a challenge to maybe think a little bit about that. And then I think my partner Ebo had a little comment as well. Yeah. yeah, kind of the same thing. You know, a, a lot of the packages are small. If you look at the jar like Julie has over here, it's definitely oh. smaller than three inches. And just take that into consideration when we're thinking of the verbiage for the warning labels um, and the warning symbols as well. You know, I really like, personally, I like the triangle without the not safe for kids. I think, I think that's sufficient. But it's also just something to think about when, you know, we have these small packages and there's a lot of information to put on there including the, the cultivation dates, the harvest dates, which were you know, really important for consumers. Um, so yeah, I mean, we think we're in a good place, but just take those things into consideration you know, as we're moving forward. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. And for the members of the public, one thing I will say, the five inch piece is not in the statute. That is not an edict that, and just to be clear, um, if it were a package like a pouch, in order to read and see everything, um, that's kind of what, and be able to legibly see it, which is why it's there. So it's just a consideration set, but thank you so much for your comment. Thank you. That's it for public comment. Fantastic. Mr. Gorman, I think we are um, ready to adjourn. All right, do we, do we have a motion to adjourn? I can make that motion. Okay. In, in seconding. All right. Uh, all in favor? The uh, meeting is uh, is adjourned for the day, and we'll reconvene next Monday.